Thanks for tuning into the No More, Do More podcast. We love having you here and it's our mission to bring you all of the latest and greatest tips, skills and know-how to make you the best that you can be. We know that you have it in you and we're going to show you how. Now, let's get started. Silgwa, uh, welcome to the first episode of the No More, Do More podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Kabingu, yeah. content developer at ZD. And today, for the first episode, um, we're going to be tackling an, uh, something about gr- growing a career or developing your career. And uh, it's something, maybe a, a question many young people have, especially mm. as millennials, because I think when you're growing up, you, you never know um, when you transition from one point to another. You think mm. that things usually come automatically. Yeah. And we'd like to know how other people, or personally, because I think... Even the first reason why I wanted us to do the podcast was me feeling that I need, um, I have this feeling of self-development, self-improvement, and I want to talk to people and know um, how they did what they do, they did how they got to where they are in their lives. Yeah, okay. So it's yeah something I'm very interested in, okay. like okay. just knowing. Especially, I'm not a techie. Uh, 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 today's guest is a techie, and I don't know much about tech. He's a mobile money expert with a heavy inclination towards analytics. Correct. In God, I trust. All others bring data. <laughs> <laughs> Working in the largest mob, uh, mobile money implementation in the world, Mpesa. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So Mnaskia, big guy. Getting him here was very hard. You had to talk to his people. <laughs> yeah, the room. Uh, I know you can't see it right now, but the room is full of what on a mambia usi seme ivi seme ivi. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm very happy. We finally got him here, and so uh, right now, I, and actually last year you had another uh, you had another position. Yes, and you got promoted. Well, l- lateral move. Let's go to lateral <laughs> oh, move. So, change of role. Oh, change of role. Yeah. Yeah. So thinking, yeah, and I took what you never told us. Mm. Yeah. Um, so welcome to the podcast, Mark Mumo. Hey, Asante. Yeah. Next Asante time, Asante we'll, we'll, I think we'll have to have those ninis. Drum rolls. Yeah, drum rolls. <laughs> yeah, drum rolls. Yeah, drum rolls. Yeah. <laughs> so Mark, mm-hmm. um, I've described you in many words. Eh? Yeah. A lot of English. I didn't even understand half of the things I read. <laughs> So, how can you describe yourself? Oh, well, I think professionally, it's just that, um, and, and not describe. It's just to say what what I've been doing and in what spaces I've been. So, f- I really come from a, a, a technical background, where I set up as a developer, but I've been in the mobile money space for quite a while now, and more than that, I've been doing a lot of business intelligence. Um, the sexy art to use these days is analytics. So I'll throw that in as well as analytics. <laughs> <laughs> um, but generally, I've been in hardcore IT for, more well, like, I think the last 15 years, yeah. something like that. Yeah. And I'm a proud father of one. Uh-huh. Yeah. Married to one. Yeah. So I think you you must have your senses. Oh yeah, so that we malize your story. Was it kujakwa nyumba yangu? We're done. Yeah. <laughs> So and the question maybe I might ask is 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 it something you decided to do earlier on or it's something you just um, as your career developed you just grew, uh, grew into it, loved it and continued doing it. So in, in, uh, that's a good one. Interestingly, so mm-hmm. while while I was in, actually in, in primary school, mm-hmm. I wanted to become a pilot. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when I went to high school, I discovered. I think a pilot is expensive. Uh, it wasn't those ones of I wanted to be a doctor. Then oh. high school, I wanted to be a patient. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I realized, eh, in high school, I realized all the guys who are going to be pilots were flying out in the US. And my parents didn't have money. And, and then I was like, hey, forget this piloting story. Then I wanted to become an engineer. So I did actually engineering. As, uh, mechan- I chose mechanical engineering as my first choice degree. Then ended up doing instead uh, after like we joined Campo. Uh, I was a mechanical engineer and I, I joined in, um, but I'd applied for a change in course because suddenly I had to do electrical engineering. Uh, more than oh, uh, you got there and so eh, the electrical, yeah, electrical and, by then, and, and then we went on strike like three weeks into uh, opening the semester, and by the time uh, we came back, uh, for sure I was uh, Magoha rather allowed us to come back. I'd been accepted into electrical engineering. So I never really did even make end. Like I engaged for like two classes 
and that's it. Then I was an so electrical engineer. This is engineer. not for me. Yeah. This is not UN or K. Uh, UN. UN. Yeah. UN. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I just had striking, and <laughs> <laughs> that was like our first time. We'll be like, ah, we're bored. Let's play. <laughs> I'm glad yeah. they don't do that much often mm-hmm. these days. Mm-hmm. Um, but even before that, in my gap year, I, could, mm. I used the word gap year. <laughs> <laughs> There's that like a gap year. Yeah. But yeah, in that space where you finished high school and campo, you're waiting that uh, sort of one and a half years, two years. Uh, I'd. I'd, I did uh, a course in computers. I missed in Strathmore College, now university. And I think that's when I realized I'm actually good in this stuff. Um, I like IT. I, I'm a good programmer. Um, and yeah, and that's, that's, that's why it, it sort of the whole thing came out. Um, the passion. And I was like, wow. The, you know, it, it, it's, it's actually like a discovery. Like, I'm actually good in this stuff. Yeah. yeah. And and you, I think you discover you're good when you're like you're with other similarly bright people, yeah. but this particular thing you can do better can than do better them, than or they them. don't seem to have an interest. Uh-huh. Um, so I was like, okay, wow, yeah. So yeah, during the like you said like the gap year, I, I don't remember how you used to call it, but I don't think it's there anymore. But uh, Nini, that gap year is you tried. Uh, did you only try computers, or you tried other stuff? Also? Actually, I just tried. I mean, I. So there was nothing to do. Like you, you only go to okay. You only do CPS, or you do IMIS, which is the computer thing. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I don't want CPS. I clearly, I had no interest in doing accounts. Um, but I was like, okay, computers looks new, um, looks fun. The first time I actually touched a computer was in Form Four, and it was playing um, some game on uh, Windows Lotus. 95. Yeah, something like that, some yeah, very weird game. Not as a dangerous <laughs> game. One of those things. And, and and that's it. So by the time, I mean, I was even going to Strathmore, we switching on a computer was like amazing. Like using a mouse was hilarious. I mean, a lot of guys can do it. I'm like, wow, okay, how does this thing do? So yeah, so it was quite something. I think it's just followed by chance. But after that, yeah, um, really took off. Mm. Mm. Then, um, so what happened next? Was it um, an easy transition or are you, like, for instance, you say, okay, I like this. So what was the next thing you did? What did oh, you- oh, interestingly. Okay. So, I mean, even when I was in, in college then, even before I joined Campo, I uh, managed to get a job in the help desk, and I, which I think is one of the, one of the, you know, a couple of things happen in, in your life and you don't think they're significant, but then later you discard they're significant. So part of what we used to do in the help desk is we used to, sub, to help the evening. We used to have a daytime class, a full-time class, and an evening class. The evening class used to have guys who are working and they'd come for this the same course for computers and we all had a programming project. Now, working at the help desk, you inadvertently had to assist the evening students in their programming homework. So I just discovered that in the space of like three months, I pretty much sorted or sorting out programming problems every evening for like 10 or 20 different people. Um, then it felt frustrating because I was like, how can you not understand this? But now I realized by the time I was done, I had really solved many unimaginable problems. Hey, you are doing home. Hey, you are doing home. To take my coffee. And that's when I was like, this thing is not rocket science. This thing is not black magic. This is just programming. And then then, then I became really good. Um, we, formed, we even went ahead and formed a company then with some of the guys I had in, in, in uh, college together. We called it 24. And the reason at that time was saying, if we don't make a million shillings by the age we are 24, <laughs> we are quitting. Yeah. By the time we were 24, we hadn't even made, I think we had made like 50k or something. <laughs> <laughs> like we had one contract or something. Yeah. Um, but I think we enjoyed, at that point we enjoyed, and that was like three, four years into Campo. We enjoyed what we were doing. We enjoyed each other's company. So 24 still lives. Um, it's still today. around. It's yeah. still around. Yeah. Uh, finally crossed the million mark at some point. Uh-huh. Um, but but yeah, I think those are some of the experiences that I was like, wow. And even through Campo, even as I was doing Elec Eng, I kept doing on holidays. I would go still work out with some guy who gave me um, the opportunity to work for him. I was setting up networks. Those days when, when you wanted to computerize as a company, you bought computers, you connected them to the internet, you put in email and then you said you're computerized. Mm. <laughs> so that's what I was doing. I would help people buy computers, do their whole network. And those networks, it wasn't wireless. Like these days, you just come in and plug and configure. Yeah. No, it was physical cable. Wire. Wire. Yeah. So you're just laying out wires in buildings. 
um, crimping, the word was crimping where I connected, because we used to build the whole networking cables ourselves, um, login, configure, set up email servers, configure these email servers to actually connect to, to the internet, and then set up email addresses for everyone, and we were like, wow. The, on the back side of it, now that I think about it, it really helped me understand the whole um, IT stack straight from hardware. Because this guy used to have a thing of liking to buy old servers and then tells you, you restore it. So we'd, we'd go buy parts for servers uh, and then we, we restore a server that was dead um, and then make that the email server and then buy computers for these other guys and work all the way. And even at the end, some clients we used to develop applications for them. So I really understood very well the whole um, IT stack at that point in time. Yeah, at that point, how, how are you feeling? Like, uh, there's this thing of guys usually want to... I'm studying in university. I want to be a a manager. So was is that, is that okay? First, you have to give people context. Yeah, you're saying back then, oh. Oh, this back then. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! So so back then was like in 2000. Uh, 2000, 2000, yeah. 2000 2002. So about. <laughs> 18 years was, the, was was that attitude still there of i like, i'm in campus i want to go directly to no uh, uh, okay maybe i mean then no we didn't we didn't want to be managers okay I, I didn't want i wanted to learn i think it was in that space where i was like oh wow this stuff is new this stuff is amazing and i need to to to, to make this work i think i think the other thing is my parents stopped paying for me school fees after first year and then they're like, dude, you need to sort yourself out for the rest from second year, third year. And it wasn't like a decision they made because they didn't. It's just that I realized in second year, they didn't have money. And and, and you still wanted to go. And I, was, go. I was in campus. I'm like, people, you, you don't have, what do you mean you don't have money? They're like, we don't have money. Um, I think my sister was in campus and they're paying for her. My brother was in high school. So at that point in time, I realized, and my sister had actually sat out a whole year um, because they, we didn't have money. So she sat out a whole year in her campus here. So I was like, wow. So... I will probably sit out a whole year as well if I don't do something. So jumping into this space, it was also more like survival, like, yeah. hey, get get deals and and yeah, whatever I could get. Yeah, yeah, get that. Yeah, yeah. Wow. yeah. very interesting. So it's uh, that it drove you to it drove. I mean, yeah. So suddenly, you know, those those spaces in in holiday in university where you have like I think us was six months or something or five months, where it's really long. And for me, it wasn't go back and chill. It was get work and luckily there was this guy I was working for is called Bobby Yawe. He's a really awesome guy. Um it was like go back to Bobby, um sit and do something for him. Um half of the stuff I did I wasn't paid half of the stuff because even they weren't paying Bobby. But half of the stuff he'd pay me something small. Um I think in the end is like by the time the semester started I'd I s- some had enough money for, you know, for need, which was just like you needed 30 g's by the way you know, but, you know, back then <laughs> back then you needed 30 g's <laughs> to survive yeah. uh, it worked mm-hmm. yeah so uh is, is that the same thing you did all through um campus or i'm i mean so i i did quite a bit of stunt with bobby i worked from some other guys who are doing websites as well which was very different so i was doing web development then i just said i did i don't really like that stuff um, because it's all front. I mean, you designers know the, the yeah, yeah. design is very yeah. subjective. I think yeah. like you might do something and someone likes it. You do and something and guys yeah. are like Z. Yeah, yeah. It's the same thing. So I was like, oh, this thing is too subjective for me. I like backend. I'm, I'm like more. I mean, backend is is standard. But I did I did websites for a season. Um, actually, I hope they're all down now. But uh, <laughs> I had like two or three websites to my name. Um, so I did that. I did stuff with Bobby. It was always in the space of IT. I um, also worked with some guys on some sensors application. I mean, sorry, not sensors, some law. Um, I think it's Kenya Law Reforms or something. One of these guys worked with them. So in different seasons, I was trying out different things, but always around, surprisingly, Bobby. So Bobby was sort of the place where he had an office and you could go in. He, had, he was a really interesting guy. Like he was, His office was always open, almost 24 hours. And anyone in IT, you could almost sit in and work. He wasn't charging. In fact, I think now I think about it, like this guy was running an, a private iHub. Yeah. <laughs> as long as you're in IT, <laughs> yeah. come sit there. Yeah. Just introduce yourself to Bobby. Say what you're doing. He wasn't. He wouldn't ask too many questions. He was like, oh, okay, sit in my space. There's internet. Yeah, he just gives you internet and work. If there's anything that you guys have in common that probably can work out, he would. But generally, this guy is interesting. He was just happy to let guys work in his space. Yeah. So, um... What I'm hearing is uh, 
mentorship was important. Actually, yes. Say, now, yeah. now that I think about it, that yeah. was mentorship without even being, yeah. yeah, mentorship and someone believing and trusting in you. Interesting, you said mentorship because it, it, in a sense, it was indirect. Ment- I mean, Bob would then would come and say, "Dude, we need to set up this server." Then he gives me an old server, gives me the parts, and says, "Here's the internet," and disappears for like a day. When he comes back, he's like. I expect this thing to, to be working. Yeah, it sounds like those old Chinese movies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and then you just then, yeah. In the end you'll become an expert martial artist. Yeah. yeah. I mean the time is coming, like, guys, how come you've not fixed this server? And then it'd help you like for like an hour and then you'd get a call and it's like, okay, see you guys, and it's out. But I should say you're like, okay, I can do these things myself. Yeah. So I think there's that there's that mentorship which I need to appreciate and acknowledge now that that was there. Um, and also just opportunities. I mean, this guy allowed me to go into companies that would never open their doors. Um, we set up uh, St. Christopher School, I think, in Karen. Is it in Karen? On the way to Karen. I mean, just let's go set up the whole network. And those were 30 computers. We laid out the whole network. We He brought in some... Um, those were Macs, interestingly, then. We set them up from scratch. We configured them to email. We configured everything. I mean... It, I was like, yeah, these opportunities, it's someone believing in you and giving you an opportunity and say, go ahead, go ahead and do. Um, in the head, knowing these guys have no knowledge except the internet. That's all they have. <laughs> yeah. And was there any, like, the coding landscape, um, like, now coders are, like, superstars. But back then, how was it? Then it wasn't as much, eh? I, th- I think the biggest thing was, first of all, uh, and the reality then is the internet didn't have as much uh, coding resources as now. Um, what were you using back then? W- then, I, like, for example, in my hard coding, I was using Visual Basic. Mm-hmm. We had VB then. These days, guys have Visual C++ and, and you can just go online and Google. Those days, they used to give the help stuff on uh, CDs. Mm-hmm. In fact, there was a time I thought of giving a gift of... It was called the MS, MSDN... Um, I think to help studio pack or something. Mm-hmm. It was a whole, like four CDs of help material. I thought of giving that to someone as a birthday gift because I thought it was pretty <laughs> awesome until my friends told me do not, do not. And it was a girl I was going to give it to. And they're like, dude, I know you like MSDN. Do not, it is not a birthday gift. Yeah. But I was very happy to have it myself. So I used, those days you walk around with a couple of branded MSDN yeah. CDs, you feel like you're the hero. <laughs> Like any question is probably in those CDs. In those you CDs, you yeah. load it and you you read it. It's even like a thing you just read. Mm-hmm. It's not like these days you can just ask a random question and you have a set. So that yeah. stuff wasn't that then. Oh, yeah, back then, yeah. You, the internet, not as many resources as now. It, yeah. yeah. In fact, those days, there's a time it was more email. Mm-hmm. Email was bigger than internet. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but hey. Uh, maybe the next thing I, I might ask is, how was Mark as a student? Before I, I know we'll go back, we'll go to what to the new year. Yeah, how how what kind of student are you? <laughs> if my friends knew this. So interestingly, I really was a bad student, to say the truth. Um I was skiving, I think at that point in time, and maybe this is when I think when I look back, I'm like, I really should have done better. I was I was skiving a lot <laughs> of classes. This is your end. Like and the way UN works generally is your cut would come, I think, like two weeks before exams. Yeah, yeah. So as long as you're in... You're in and the problem is at times there's a, there's a season where I was really enjoying working and church and, and studies were like the last thing on my mind. And I would skive the entire semester except come in like two weeks before the cuts, read hard, do the cuts, then two weeks before the exams. And then so it's like I would do a month instead of three months of education. Now, in hindsight, I probably should have been coming four weeks yeah. before the cut to do the cut or something, um, or at least try to attend some classes. Um, yeah, but I also think education needed to be made a bit more interesting. It was very... Well, like it was, I don't say it wasn't my thing. I mean, I enjoyed some of the stuff that I was doing, but I was like, we really need to improve the way we deliver content in our universities, and, and I think we need to engage those minds much better than we do now. Yeah, but I honestly was a bad student, I think. Yeah. But if I as I keep, if I said but I keep saying if I went back, I probably just would attend classes a bit more earlier. Hmm? Maybe instead of two weeks before class. So, so four just, weeks. See, I'll go to all the classes. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just try to go to more classes. To, I, I, yeah, two more classes. <laughs> I think I I think I'm, I maybe not be, I'm just becoming philosophical, mm-hmm. but I think we need to have a clear tie of the 
theory we are doing to the practical stuff that yeah. we want to do or guys are doing so that it engages guys more. Yeah. Um, I think you've done theory all the primary. Yeah, that's, primary that's the need you get. Yeah. yeah, you're like, I mean, campus, please make... Make uh, it, I think it should be like the things you do outside should give you more credit than... Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I mean, when I think about it, I did... Because in fact, they were telling us to do internship. Me for my time for my internship, I just went back to Bobby. I'm like, Bobby, I've been with you for three years. Yeah. Can you now call this an internship? Yeah. I just continue doing the same stuff I've been doing, yeah. and we now call it an internship. And yeah. Bobby was like, Yeah. yeah. Um, so I had I sort of did four years of internship. Yeah. Um, most guys are struggling to get the internship. internship yeah. Um, but yeah, um, as you said, more we need to tie out stuff we're doing outside more than I mean outside with what you're doing in Campo, mm-hmm. for sure. Interesting. So um the next step you're, you're done with campus. Mm. What what was next? What happened? So in, 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 and and this this is the interesting thing. So while I was in campus, in as much as it sounds like I was just this alcoholic <laughs> making a lot of money. In fact, I need to put a disclaimer. I made very little money. I did a lot of free work. I did a lot of work where I was played. Uh the some guys we did work and they didn't pay us. Um but we loved I think we loved the technical challenge. Um, so yeah, there's, there's lots of free work I did, um, but apart from that as well, is in campus is when I came to to, serious, to seriously appreciate my faith, um, and that is because there was a campus ministry that was happening then called SALT, that is at uh, by Mamlaka Hill Chapel now, then it was called Nairobi Chapel. Um, so when I finished campus, I went to work for the church, and I did an internship in the church for an entire year. I worked with the youth. Um, and surprisingly, I, I built their website. <laughs> so I was, it was still the kateki side in me. Yeah. Like, we're doing youth. Yeah, 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 yeah. But in the evenings, I'm, I'm working on the church website. I'm sorting out the church network. So I used to be like the techie go-to guy in the church. Um, but that was awesome. A lot of my leadership skills were honed while working in the church. And a lot of them have come to play out later at work because I've realized some of the stuff that you do in, in internship, you, you never... Will, will do, no one will ever train you at work, but you'll be needed to do those things in work. So I've been called to work to, I mean, some of the things is self-initiative. I've been told to, to run team buildings. And I'm like, and I'm like, yeah, let's do this. And the other like, how did you know that? I'm like, I did it five years ago. In <laughs> church. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's been that thing of, I think everything you do, as long as you apply passion to it, it'll come out in the future. People say hindsight is twenty twenty. Now is when I look back and I'm like, wow. Some of the stuff I was doing then, some people were like, ah, don't do it, it doesn't, it counts in the future at some place, for sure. Um, so, oh yeah, so I did uh, did my internship for a year, finished my internship, at that point in time I was heading, do I go into ministry or do I go techie? I think the techie pool in me was pretty strong. I mean, I was busy doing websites in church the whole time. <laughs> so even when I told them I'm, I'm going back to do engineering, actually they were like, wow go ahead in fact my referee was my pastor at that point in time mm. so then i applied for safaricom i said that's a cool story so i applied the first time they 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 rejected me they, this is one year after uh, one, uh, after year uh-huh. they doing the internship uh-huh. so i applied they rejected me the there's a graduate management program they didn't even respond <laughs> <laughs> you know that you said a cv somewhere yeah, yeah, yeah. nothing it's never, like a black hole yeah never hear back <laughs> Um, then I was told about another opportunity in Safaricom. So I was trying a few other places, but I was told about this opportunity in Safaricom. They were looking for specifically for software developers. Um, I applied for for that. I went for one interview. Those days they used to do psychometric tests. So you go in, we do these funny math questions. You do these English questions. I did that. Yeah, they still do that. Yeah, this, well, uh, do we? Uh, we do for some, yeah. but those days were everything. Like everyone, like only everyone has to do math in this organization. <laughs> everyone has to do English. Anyway, so I did that thing, and then they sent me a regret. Mm-hmm. I was like, eh, hey, So I looked at our places, but then after like... So, okay, back. so when you get that regret, how, how are you feeling at that? It's, it's, it's really disappointing, mm-hmm. especially when... And you know society, the way society does for us is we go to... Like, you're always measured. You go to primary school, you're measured amongst many people, yeah, and you're yeah. told you're the best or mm-hmm. you're one of the best. Mm-hmm. You go to high school again, you're measured with everyone. Yeah. And you're given, I mean, society keeps you in this ranking space and tells you that success, if you're number one, you're successful. If you're number last, you're not successful, yeah. which I think is a lie, but we'll get back to that at some point. And then, at, well, at least in university, in, in campus, they don't rank you. 
they just give you a grade yeah. and and even mine wasn't the best grade I got a second lower if you get a second upper in Kampo you are like successful yeah. you are a winner anyone below a second upper you are a loser mm. um, but hey um, so I think when I got the reject it was disappointing at first it was like I'm not good enough um so so that put me down a bit mm. yeah um yeah i mean in high school like and i said that's your, your first thing of this this is some of the few re- re- rejections you have it's like oh wow but when this opportunity came again the second time i reapplied but i was like ah, well they rejected you, me the first not, time yeah you didn't put so much weight into the mm, but i was like if they didn't find anyone mm. maybe they'll take the second best Not. <laughs> <laughs> as a practice the second time I got in. Yeah. Uh me I came in as a junior uh developer then I realized in the first round I don't know what happened. Um especially because in the first uh first round I'd been sitting with in the second round I remember doing the the same stuff that math thing which was the same sort of very similar and there's some guys who had been working so when you sit next to them you're like these guys have been working and you you're just straight from a church. Yeah. How will you pass but I'm the one who got called. Yeah. So maybe I know better math so I'm not as bad in math and English. That experience came back to help you at that moment. Yeah. yeah. Um yeah and, and did the interview which was pretty interesting. They they said of I did the interview with the, like four people which I thought was overwhelming yeah. for just a student who just come from <laughs> from church. Yeah. Um and the first question I didn't know and I really panicked. But they cuz asked me what does a rectifier do? Yeah. that's an electrical engineering question and I still don't know what a electrical rectifier <laughs> does any serious electrical engineer needs to know what a rectifier does so if you know an electrical engineer and they don't know what a rectifier does they're a fake one like me um then I panicked I was like Quisha I don't have this yeah. this interview is finished yeah. but then they went ahead surprisingly one of the guys decided to ask me more programming questions and because I'd been doing programming yeah we had a one and a half hour conversation on deep techy programming stuff <laughs> like at some point we were even writing code yeah. on the board yeah. so in the end i was like wow that was a fantastic interview i yeah. think i've missed it because i don't know what a rectifier is yeah. but for one and a half hours we were talking like code like yeah. we were writing code yeah. so you're like, focusing on the negative i was yeah, i was really <laughs> focusing on the negative like you know quisha boss you don't know what a rectifier is yeah. you you're finished yeah but you, you don't look at the one and a half hours of of, of the, just writing yeah, code yeah, yeah. Um so when they came in and they said we want to offer you a job as a junior developer I was like oh wow awesome. Yeah. Um and that's when I jumped in I was like oh so maybe maybe we don't need rectifiers in Safari <laughs> Um yeah well, is that question let's get one question to throw them off Kwanza. I know so yeah, yeah, yeah how they'll recover. <laughs> <laughs> But then I think that let's see how they recover. So yeah I think they recovered really well. Mm-hmm. Um yeah so then joined in um mm-hmm. Then I was a developer so I worked in in as a junior developer for I think one and a half years. At this time how big was Safcom? Mm, that was in about 06 or 07. So I think we were about to hit uh, I don't know 2 3 million customers. Mm-hmm. We're pretty is it 2 3 was, was Cancel still or no Cancel it, Cancel had, so Cancel had changed it was now it had then it had moved to Celtel. Uh-huh. It had changed from Celtel it was now I think by the time I came it was either being Celtel or Zane. Remember Zane? Yeah. Yeah. So it was even way before I tell at that point in time. Yeah. Um yeah. So well, those those were interesting days. Those are the days we used to compete the two of us. Like we we when I came in we were launching Bonga and we were supposed to to launch Bonga like we were two months out in our preparations. And then one day someone came and said uh Sartre are going to launch launch their own version of Bonga in the next two weeks. Yeah. Well like And those days are like whoever launches fast wins. Yeah. So we're like people your two months have been cut into a week. So we worked back and forth for the entire week um fixing bugs. I remember we were given a risk report that was 23 pages of issues we needed to fix and my boss just held his head like this okay you guys can see because it's a podcast. But he he, he put his hands on top of his head and read it like better I'm reading for the whole of Friday. Then he said I want to save run on Saturday. Then on Saturday we worked we just had a discussion talking about all those issues 23 pages worth of issues and we worked every day till 10 11 pm for the next uh one week we launched actually exactly on the second week um Celtel never launched their bonga for 
couple of years. I don't know what happened. Or maybe the the guy was sent to panic people. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, it's just those rumors that corporate rumors that. It was. I know yeah. those those things are strong because mm. people are like these are reliable sources. It wasn't that it's just me and you are that. No, no. This is yeah. our boss being told, guys, those guys are going to launch, so you better launch. And Michael Michael Joseph then was like, guys, I need this thing live, and they never launched for like um, two years or something. I don't even remember when they, they launched or whatever. But we we launch like because we have to beat them. Uh, Bonga grew then. So anyway, so yeah, I did that. So this time you're you're still a, div- a junior you're still developer. New, you're still new, relative. Well, actually, that time I was about four months old. Uh, four months old. Yes, yeah, so we were busy working these crazy hours and <laughs> launching this thing. And how did you handle the pressure? How do you handle that? You're you're young. <sighs> yeah, Nini, that pressure. I know. Fanyani, mm. fanyani. Interesting. So interestingly, um, I had a good um, boss then. So my boss knew he he was happy to throw things at us, and he could figure out when we are struggling and when we are not struggling. So he'd say, "I want you to do this," and then be like, "Okay." And then we we go Google how to do it, and he's like, "I think the best thing he used to do is he used to give us like time boxes." So he's like, "Do this in two days," and if you're not if it's not done in a day or something. You you go tell him, hey boss, I'm supposed to be 50%. I'm not even 10%. So he's like, okay, what do I need to help you, or what do we need to do? But he was giving us a lot of leeway as well to to do stuff. So that was the other thing. And but the other thing is, he was really ambitious. He used to throw challenges at us. I think we were a new team then, and we were trying to get, to make a name for ourselves, and that's why we took Bonga. So like the, the interesting thing, there's, there's a time you'd come and say, guys, we need to to launch a new promotion. And then he say, "What do we need to do?" So he tells us what the promotion is about, and he asks us, "How long will this take?" And then we do our plans. We do our plans. We're like, we need to build, uh, build this database, then build this application, then connect this to USSD. And then in your head, you're like, "This thing will take about three weeks." Yeah. Then he says, "So how long will it take in total?" He says, "Like, it's gonna take three, three weeks." Then he, he starts shaking his head like this, <laughs> like uh, yeah. you know, like wrong yeah. answer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Three, three. Then you go like in your head, you reduce. Yeah, even you, you reduce yourself. Yes. <laughs> so like, two weeks. He's like, no, you know, yeah. when a crashes, and people used to really use this Zelda story to bash us. Like, Zelda's are going to do something, so we only have like a week <laughs> maximum to do yeah. this. And I'm like, then why did you ask her for time? Let's like, already know the end date. So then he says, so I'm like, then we're like, okay, so I think it will take like six days. No, 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 no. You need to do it in four days because a week we need to give one day for the business to test. And that time it's a Friday. You know, because a Friday you're just thinking how you're going to enjoy your weekend, yeah. how you need to watch soccer on Saturday. <laughs> so we agree, we finally agreed. It has, come, it has come from three weeks to four days. Yeah. And then we say, eh, four days? Yes. So he says, so we've agreed four days? Yes. So in your head, you know four days means Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Thursday yeah. Then on Friday yeah. is when business will test and then you launch yeah. on Friday night. Yeah. So this is... So this means it will be ready on. So all of us are guessing Thursday. He says Tuesday. <laughs> he is counting Saturday, <laughs> Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Yeah. We're like, okay. No and weekend. That, that, that's how my weekend used to go. And I'm like, dude, you take my weekends on a Friday evening. How I didn't <laughs> kill him, I don't know. Uh, I guess also, it's also nice being single at that point in time. Uh, <laughs> so you just, yeah. I mean, your only sort of plan was to wake up and watch TV or something. So you wake up and you tell guys, Nimenda Kazini. Yeah. And then you work through Saturday and Sunday, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. yeah so that was the excuse. I'm single because eh, Kazi. <laughs> Kazi <you mean? laughs> and I know a couple of guys who are still single in the name of work. People do not remain single because of work. There is more to life than work. Than work, yeah. For sure. <laughs> so um, you launched Bonga then. So how how now I'm seeing you you started um, going up in the rankings. Mm. Yeah. How. Is it things you did? What were the things you saw or the management saw that helped you like get uh-huh. this? Yeah. So I think a couple of things. One was just a lot of the the work ethic. So as I said, because we were that time a new a new team and we we're trying to make a name for ourselves, we were taking on progressively bigger and bigger challenges. And the one thing about I think big organizations is some people are comfortable. Some people do not want to take more scope. Or more work than they're already doing yeah. they're just happy to take home their salary but as guys were that hungry team and i guess my boss was because he was trying to make a name for the entire team 
we will take more and more and more challenges. So soon we were running other things outside sort of our domain. Um, put us in a bit of trouble, honestly. Um, but I think guys were like, okay, if you have a problem or you have something new that you want launched, and that was sort of the, the business team, the commercial team, you could either go to these guys who are rigid, who will block and give you 15 reasons why it cannot be done, or you can go to this team that we will deliver it a, a bit broken, but you will get it. Um, and those, so, so that's the sum of the things. And then about two years later, there's a, there a reshuffle and I was changed into a, a different role. And still, it wasn't actually a promotion, it was just a different role um, where I was sent to the billing team. So, billing team is guys who had been trained on our billing systems. And our billing system is what gives, like, shows you guys your airtime on Safaricom, how many how much airtime you have, how many bundles you have, that's on the billing system. So I went in there and I'm like, I've been programming for the last two years, hard programming, now I'm going into this billing system where I don't need to write a line of code um, because everything is being done by the vendor. But interestingly, that time our vendor was German, it was Nokia Siemens, I think were, that time they were called, it was Siemens, I didn't even join, it was just Siemens. And that this billing system which was super stable, but the requirements that you'd ask for something and you get it in 18 months. So what I realized is before you give a requirement, you need to be so clear and precise. So I started reading that document and the, the Germans could document like crazy. So when they would give us documents to read, all the guys in the team pretty much weren't reading too much. Um, but I would read these documents as if, well, I had nothing else to do. And I would read them like, I mean, I'd read them on a man, you read a document Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Then I'd give a report back to my new boss and tell my boss, this, these are the small things that I think will cause us trouble, or these are the small things that I think have been missed out in this requirement. And she really appreciated. Soon, any time she'd get a document, she'd pass it on to Mark. Like, Mark, shake at this thing. You tell me what is what 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 the small print, what the fine print says, and tell me what is missing. So soon I was the guy, like, any document, I'm the reviewer. Um, I think part of it was because of my programming. But you know, in part programming, you have to to cross, to cross the T's. Yeah, cross the T's and dot the I's. Yes. Yeah. So because I was doing that in programming, I was also in these documents. I'd, I'd be saying, okay, what exactly are these uh, guys saying, and what what can I not miss, or what can if we miss, it means in 18 months' time you've missed the uh, you've dropped the ball. Um, so it was pretty interesting that my boss then did that. Um, and then she gave me extra. I mean, when you have a programmer, you know, programmers never stop programming. Mm -hmm. So even then, I, I started doing some st stuff on the side, and we we were changing billing systems from um, a Chinese one to this German one, and they needed a solution because there's some scope that had been missed out between the two vendors. And so my boss was like, "Makumo, can you write this?" I was like, "Yeah, of course." Yeah. I mean, I'd been itching to to yeah, program, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I went on this crazy programming and I was writing the call CDRs called data records every time you do a call we, we write a record of who called who you called and the cost and use that for our billing much later and our reporting so I, I said converting I mean converting between the two systems so that they, they could work on our uh, reporting stuff and I remember that is the hardest I've ever worked because I would wake up every day I'd report to the office at 8 in the morning, I would leave at midnight every day for a month. Non-stop work. Yeah. yeah. I was so tired. I don't even remember. I, 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 then again, I said benefits of being young. Mm -hmm. You are so tired on, and you work Monday to Monday doing that. Like No weekends, still no weekends. No weekends. Yeah. You you even stop thinking. Like I'd have come, I'd, I remember sitting with my friends and like, let's catch up for in the evening. And you come out, you're so tired as they're talking. First of all, you're writing code in your head as they're talking, and you're like, This is very boring. What you guys are talking about? I'm writing code in my head. Yeah. And then you're like, I need to sleep. I really need to sleep. Um, but it was, it was, I mean, there's a day we, we, we worked. I remember because we were late, the project needed to launch and we were really late. And I worked from Friday morning. We said, Now we really have to push. So I worked from Friday morning all day till Saturday morning. I did a whole 24 hours of writing code. Which I think is really a mistake because I think at some point you add yeah. you introduce bugs more yeah, than yeah, you are yeah. you are yeah. doing anything, and then when we got out in the morning, we went to say now we will sleep during the day. I got 
I took a taxi home because I, was, I wasn't even tra- trusting myself in a mat. Um, I would like I'll probably sleep in this mat and all my laptop will be taken and everything. So I left at eight on Saturday morning, and by the time I get into my house at ten, I'm called by my boss and she's like, "Guys, we're in crisis. You guys didn't achieve what you needed to do, and this thing has to launch next weekend. Come back." So I'm, I'm like, but, 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 but we've just worked 24 <laughs> like hours. Like, I've used every single minute of the day. Yeah. yeah. And she's like, I'm sending a taxi to you now. Yeah. So all I did was shower mm-hmm. between 10 and by 11.30, mm-hmm. I was back in the, the office. office. Yeah. And I worked again all the way till 6 p.m. That was like a straight 36 hour. I don't know what even I wrote, but it was fine. Yeah. Um, it worked. It worked. Yeah. But I remember now sleeping on Saturday night. I really slept like a baby. And by Sunday 2 p.m., I was back working again. Because we had to, to cut over the next weekend, and which we did. Um, the, the, the back of that story is one of the... Um, and that's how I got into now business intelligence. Because we were writing these CDRs for the business intelligence system. One of the guys I was working with, or rather who was working the business intelligence system, was so impressed with my work ethic at that point in time that in two months he poached me. He was like, come to my team. If you're going to work like this and we've worked together for a month like this and you have not been followed up on, you've been coming faithfully at eight, you've been uh, sorting out issues. Because we used to work every day and we, I give them reports. I tell them this is what I've done, this is what I've done, this is what I project I'll do tomorrow. He was so impressed by that work ethic that he, he actually gave me a promotion. He pushed me and gave me a promotion mm. and I joined his team. And I worked in business intelligence for the next five years after that. Yeah, hey, that's, uh, that's impressive. And maybe the question I might ask is, during that time of pushing yourself, what kept you going? Like, I know that sometimes... If, uh, my, <laughs> I, actually that's an interesting one I have a, I have a very deep sense of ownership I own my problems and I, I like fixing them and I think that's one of the things you need to own your problems um, I kept saying and I kept telling people your biggest role at work is to make your boss not have to look over his shoulder like if your boss gives you something they don't need to think back and say will Kevin do this or not? They need to know that Kevin will do it. Once I hand it over to Kevin, it's done. Um, and if it's not getting done, Kevin will come back and tell me. But I don't need to follow up with Kevin again to say, is it done or not? So that sense of ownership. You pick something, it becomes your problem. Um, and you carry it. Um, I think that's one of the things that kept me going. I'm like, dude, we have a deadline. And if we if we don't do this, we all fail. Um, so I was like, let's, let's push. And plus it was a challenge. I like uh, the moment we were like, we can do this. Yeah, 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 challenge accepted. I like I like challenges. Yeah. So was there also the the corporate environment there like encouraging to people to do all this? Yeah, I mean we we, we, we yeah the companies you work for and like the boss. That's not the other thing, eh? Actually, true. I think your your boss has also set the tone and the pace. Like I tell you, we used to have. Even in as much as I work until midnight, I used to have a call with my boss at around 11.30 to update. And she'd be like, dude, okay, good, you've covered here. What was that promise? And, and that she was so factual. She's like, you promised X, you're not yeah, at X yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So even yeah. as you go to sleep, you're like, hey, tomorrow I need to catch up. Mm. Um, but I think it was that thing of also knowing that someone cares about what, what I'm doing is important. Mm-hmm. I think it's really, even today, guys want to know that what they're doing is important. Is important. Yeah. Yeah. So it wasn't that I was doing this thing that in the end might be thrown away, but this is important. And she kept emphasizing every, mm. I mean, every day we'd have a call with her. I'm not even sure how, because this lady had kids. So I don't even know how we were doing calling each other at 11 uh, p.m. But we'd have a, uh, like three of us would have a call, uh, me, the guy from the reporting and her. And she'd be like, okay, this is where we are. We're not there. What do we need to do? What do we need to do? And then she keeps pushing. But we, it was very clear for us that what he was doing was really, really important. Uh, and even even when we were late, I mean, we'd have meetings, she she was very clearly showing these guys are like now the, the missing puzzle and support these guys in any way. Um, so we'd like, I, at that point, you love pizza a lot. So pizza <laughs> is there every day. Yeah. I had pizza for an entire month. Yeah. Yeah, but she was like, whatever you guys need to be supported, mm-hmm. I'll do it, but just deliver. Yeah. 
Yeah. So you're comfortable, you're able to work let it. Uh, any other problem is her, she'll sort it. Yeah, she'll sort it. Yeah. I mean, I, I was taking taxis every day for a month. That's a big bill. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Every day for a month you take a taxi yeah. home. In the in the when the morning you jump but in the every day because you're living at midnight. I so, know you just have it. You don't have to think of CD changing math and stuff and CBD. No, you just have a taxi home. Okay, so you've you've been poached. Um, you're still uh, growing in the company. Yeah. So you are at Mpesa. Mm. Oh, uh, then the, then came the Mpesa story. Yeah. Now, so before I've, you go, before uh, one thing um, in Mpesa, there's so many myths about how it came about. Mm-hmm. So we, some, I don't know if it's relevant for this, but maybe you can demystify some things. <laughs> <laughs> I think there'll, there'll always be myths. Yeah. I think a lot of bits of how Mpesa came around yeah. and how many <laughs> people yeah. claim it. Someone came with the idea, idea. <laughs> <laughs> and many people claiming this is the idea or not. Yeah. Um. I. I mean, I think the formal story is that we we worked on a on a project that was meant to be for farmers. Um. It was supposed to, I think, uh, disperse money when they do farming and stuff like. But it didn't work out then. I think there was such poor uptake. And then, so the guys who built it were like, hey, okay, we have this uh, good piece of technology. What can you do with it? Um, it's sort of a, it can send money uh, around. And so it, it was almost like at that time, it looked like it was a solution looking for a problem. Mm. <laughs> and so they said, they asked guys and guys said, what do guys want to do? Uh, they want to send money home. And so they were like, okay, let's try this thing out. Where Because the initial use case for m was just really to send money home that you have money um and i remember those days sending money to your folks in shags you go to a yeah. bank you deposit into the account and then tricks or you buy a book put the money inside oh yeah. And mail it. <laughs> yeah i know you buy a book put the money inside then send it via yeah. post or something yeah. and and that's how mpesa grew by leaps and bounds yeah um yeah so i mean my pesa story had been in bf for quite some time our department had changed and stuff like that. So when M-Pesa, they want, M-Pesa had now really grown, but it was running from Germany, and we used to have issues with the links. So M-Pesa used to go down every other day. Like, there'd be an M-Pesa outage every other day, and this thing was growing leaps and bounds. So they're like, bring this thing home. And so they're like, okay, we need a team to to come and do this. So they picked up engineers, um, because this was a completely new role. It had been done by guys outside. And they're like, okay, Makumu, come and, and lead this team. So I did. Um, yeah, amazing. I was trying to do BI at that point in time and M-Pesa and failed terribly. So at least at one day I came told my boss, you need to formally change my role. I can't do BI and do M-Pesa. So I cut off at that point in time BI and dove uh, head, head deep into M-Pesa. Uh, went to China for quite a bit um, to train and learn this new system and then at some point, I remember leading a team that was about 300 strong people um, across four continents um, with a mixture of British, Indian, Chinese, and Kenyans. Uh, that was that was really interesting. But it also just showed me how to run big projects, um, what to do, what uh, risks to take, uh, and when to just shout, this is above me. Like, at some point, we, we would come in and, and we're like, okay, this problem is bigger than us. Um, um, but also like the, the clear focus the organization had like there was such clear focus and direction from the top um, we used to have every two weeks a meeting with the, the bosses to update them on where we are and any decision or any support we needed and they were very clear in fact I think one of the things I really like at some point they cut out some scope because they're like if we take on this new feature of functionality it's going to throw off by six months so let's just cut it out and let's not, uh, let's not take it now are very very clear on the direction yeah and i'm still seeing um it still harkens back to when you're in campus and doing in a way all those mm. things in a small capacity especially and that's what i'm saying the time with bobby because i really understood hardware straight i mean the whole it's are from hardware networking and stuff when i was leading this team a lot of my skills then is when they were called upon but I think all the time, the time I was doing more software, but then I was called upon because when you're leading a team, you don't really have a clear JD as a technical lead. You really are just master problem solver number one. And at times it's 
networking guys have an issue okay you work to the networking guys you're not the fixer but you need to have a good understanding to say okay what is the challenge what are the options that we need to do to fix it and then what can we finally get out and at times especially when when teams have been so stuck inside a problem their vision becomes very myopic so times you want an external person to come in who sort of have has an understanding not too much of the problem but enough to almost offer other solutions that because the team has been so stuck in it they're not seeing or just say hey guys have you tried x or have you tried y um and to also help teams um work through the problem techy teams want i think uh, might be wrong they want a leader who understands enough to appreciate the magnitude of the problem um but they don't want you to over dictate they don't need to be the this because that's what they're taking that's what they're paid to fix but they don't need to be taking enough to understand the magnitude of the problem and in some cases help them or of 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 ways for them out of it mm. yeah it's like the guide yeah exactly you understand it then you guide them through yeah. it yeah Um so we should be wrapping up. I'm My seeing, goodness, we've talked for so long. I yeah, know. I'm, see, I'm seeing Mark's team is telling me <laughs> <laughs> I clearly could talk forever. Yeah. Mm. So maybe um some final questions. Mm. Just um you don't even have to take a lot of time on these ones. Okay. Uh one is what do you wish you had known when you started out? Mm, that's an interesting or not when I started out my career. Um Actually, and I think it's it's in in different spaces. Um one I I've known different things. Right now I I think I wish I I I I could speak out more in the space I'm in now. I need to speak out more. I need to I've always been sort of the guy who sits and listens like the quiet sage, the quiet guru. But in the space I'm, I I I wish I I, I wish I could speak out more. and I should have sp- uh, spoken out more because at times more direction is needed and if you know they say if, if the quiet guys don't say something then the loudest person is on we follow and at times it might not be the right way mm. yeah um and maybe I should have been more adventurous adventurous so no just I've, I've, I mean I, I I think I've seen I think I should the world is I've just realized the world is big it's, yeah. it's been an amazing journey in, in safari com honestly mm. Um but there are many other companies that I should <laughs> see the world I, yeah. when this when the space where you can actually work in any country mm. um it's not like in our folk time where they don't yeah. work in in, in Kenya mm. um and I'm like guys and I'm not saying that the opportunity is gone even now I'm like let's work in other countries let's yeah. see the world the world is big yeah so even this thing of young people wanting uh jobs as if there are no jobs like they should broaden their heart. completely yeah. like stop looking in fact actually the one thing i've realized is called the there's some there's some countries where things are going down some countries things are going up it's all, and it's always been like that like any calamity somewhere is an opportunity for someone somewhere else so guys look at the whole world as your playground playground not just kenya if you look at kenya you were in but i the world needs like kenya is known as the hotbed of fintech we've registered over 90 fintechs in the last Three months like but the rest of the world is waking up to fintech jump in go work in other places see africa i mean things are bad okay no, let's say things are bad in africa but if you work as well as in africa you probably are the expert take advantage of that and and see the world and for me i'm sick it's not even too late i can still do that even now yeah, yeah. it's never too late it's never too late okay uh the next question what are you curious about right now Um interestingly so what what are the, the stuff that I'm curious about now so so now I've discovered all this cloud stuff I'm reading a lot about uh AWS um Amazon that's Amazon web services um I'm trying to see about Azure as well so that's the stuff I'm curious about and then the stuff that is about a bit out there I'm trying to understand is IoT sounds like it's going to be really big internet of things it's going to be really big um so I read about that um quite a bit um that's on the text side on the other stuff i've always I've realized i like motivational books in as much as people hate hate on them <laughs> the old motivational books are a hoax I, i just like them yeah. like there's this on this guy who keeps saying that there's someone who's written a book on how to make money mm-hmm. and and now he's he's asking for money to publish the book and we've told him to read his own book <laughs> but i'm like i like motivational stuff <laughs> yeah. yeah 
Okay, ah, not this one. So I'll ask you from the anonymous tech people. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, okay, maybe I didn't mention this in the beginning. Uh, Mark is also a, a director at ZD. Uh, ZD is. Uh, uh, by the way, we didn't ask you anything about how did you come about the whole ZD thing. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. So so interestingly, so there's a time I was. I mean. Uh, so our founder Joyce used to work in Safaricom a long time ago. Then she left and went to become a celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> she was in Apprentice African yeah. stuff. And then we, we connected like many years later. And she was working on this idea and working on something else. And then she asked, can we assist at that time? So we 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 pitched. Um, she liked our pitch, but we were too expensive for her. So she went quiet for like I think a couple of months. Then she came back later and she said, okay, I'm working on this thing called uh, an online uh, uh, learning platform. Um, would you guys care to be my technical partners? So we jumped in there and said, like, yeah, yeah, technical case. And she, in fact, she had outsourced the work. Um, and then we worked in a bit. And as we kept giving input, driving and stuff, at some point she was like, okay, guys, I'd like you guys to really be my partners. Um, and I mean, have a stake in the company. And that's how we joined ZD, and and it soon it, it moved from just uh, technical input to we even put money inside it. Um, yeah, so that's how we <laughs> that's how <laughs> we are so yeah. we are so in ZD right yeah. now. Yeah, but and that's actually twenty four that that the company that I did in Kampala that's yeah. one that sort of uh, partnered with Dress at yeah. that point in time. Yeah. So yeah, I've been in ZD for quite a bit, running the technical wing, mm-hmm. um, and yeah, driving the product development and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Great. Um, uh, we'll talk more about ZD when we have um, the founder Joyce Mbaya. Um, you'll know, you'll learn more about ZD, but you can always check it out at www.zd.com. Yeah. And finally, mm-hmm. I haven't asked the tech questions. I'm asking how um, relationships in the workplace. How how are techy? Like we've uh, like we've had. You're so busy. How do you balance it with relationships, or as you get, um, as you progress, or you grow in the company, does time start? Zinanza uh, ku na more time ya kufanya other things outside. Oh yeah. yeah, so that's that's interesting because I uh, and I, I guess I guess the real answer is there's a there's a time and a season mm-hmm. for everything. I said because there's that season where I practically did nothing except work, and I think as a techie, you you really love. Especially like like when you're in the zone, you kind of kick out everything. But I, now in, uh, in hindsight is you need to make time for family. You need to make time for friends. Partly because one of the problems with us tech is, is we end up at times focusing more on the solution or on the technical bit than the real problem. The world has real, real problems apart from code and apart from PHP or Java and stuff. And the more we interact with our friends, is the more we, and and our family and the world out there, I think is the time is when we we can see the opportunities that our tech can solve. Or what I mean by that is, because I've seen techies who are so techy that they, they don't even know how the world operates, or they completely, they start, they continue using old archaic ways to solve problems. Like, my wife is more for lack of a better, my, my wife is is a digital native. If there's a word like that, so like her, if I want to to do what, if I want to to find out what time um, these guys of Nyaya House close, me I will I will I will start asking people. <laughs> her she'll go online, she look for their number. In fact, is what time does it close? And then she'll do that. If she wants food, she's like. So you just order online. Me, I'm like, no, 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 no. But I have to go pick it myself. <laughs> She's like, but why? Technology has yeah. evolved. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, she places orders to restaurants by calling. I'm like, no, no, no. You need to go physically there and place yeah. the order. Yeah. So she's very digitally native. But I guess, for, and one of the things I've realized is, like, I can't remember, like, the time we, we, we were planning... Uh, a trip and I used a travel agent. Shame on me. <laughs> How she went online and booked it herself. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> you need to interact with it's very easy to sit in your tech cocoon and because tech changes so fast, you'll be left behind. Um but I think by interacting with people, um relating with people, it also helps you enjoy your tech more. Um because you understand I mean 
in the end tech will pass but people won't pass your family and it's like pass. have a hobby have an interest that's outside your tech your so tech. you can meet other people from yeah. different fields exactly yeah like tech is like weed you need to win yourself for it <laughs> and and please be seen by other people people don't yeah. think he's that geeky no. guy who yeah yeah alipotea mm. yeah. Mm. yeah and that's it that's a wrap oh cool it's been yeah it's been like an hour i think My done more than an hour it's a good thing we didn't like, yeah. yeah it's a good thing we didn't do this yesterday yeah. i was so tired yesterday which is yeah good 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 you're a good interviewer <laughs> <young man. laughs> i'm trying yeah it's Sassa. the first one i think we will improve as we go Sassa. and like you've had um always uh, push yourself mm. um always go to class <laughs> Alia, go to, go class. to class go to some classes yes <laughs> and it's um it's more, more of just broaden your horizon mm. um there are more things than the small is that that car box we are, we are always taught to live in or think inside itupe there's no mm. box yeah. yeah yeah um just go out and broaden your horizon don't complain when you get opportunities it's not always about money some yeah. skills might come to help you like you've heard from mark later on in life and um, that's been our show we, um, we hope you can go and go and check out um, www.zd.com and you can also check out our socials and if you if you want um any further questions you might send them to us you might ask mark Yeah, if we can get yep. him yeah, <laughs> maybe we'll book him next year again mm. so yeah um thank you and that's our show uh, thanks for being here mark thank you kevin yeah that was fun okay <laughs> this week's episode has come to an end but the fun doesn't have to stop here if you have any questions suggestions or feedback head over right now to twitter and facebook and like and share comment get involved let us know what you think what you want to learn next and join us next time <laughs>